Hi everyone, my name is Sherry. I am the owner of Brush Paint Studio and Vintage in Constantia, Poland. Have you ever painted something and no matter how hard you tried, you just can't stand it? That's this one right here. So as with all the furniture that I find, this piece was super cheap and I'm not afraid to try things that I've never done before and just experiment with color and see if something comes out looking nice. Well, I tried chalk paint, I tried artisan enhancements products, I tried different colors of wax and I just couldn't get it the way I wanted. Just to show you, this is uh, repro furniture. It's probably from Holland or Germany and it's very square. Veneer on probably particle board or MDF or something and they're trying to make it look old or give it some character but it's it's a rectangular shape. I've taken the legs off um, which was really easy to do because there's only four screws that was that were holding this on. I have bought new legs and I bought new black legs that are angled and more modern in styling. I've taken off the doors. There is a shelf that goes in the middle of that. I am going to take off all the chalk paint and I'm using the heat gun and this uh, scraper. Love this scraper. I'll leave a link below. Um, I also have Artisan Enhancements products on this, which um, please check out their website. I'll leave the link below. They have amazing um, decorative um, products and material. I've started removing the paint. It actually comes off really easily with the scraper and the heat gun. Uh, it does have a wax on it, so you just have to be mindful. So, all of the paint is off. I don't know if you noticed in the video, but it was much easier to take the top off, uh, the paint off the top than it was off of the sides. That's just because, like I said earlier, I had some Artisan Enhancements products on there. Great products, just didn't work for this. So I've got 100 grit. I'm going to give this a quick sand, uh, just to make sure there's no residual paint any kind of hardened paint from the heat gun, um, even at the surface. I will go over it with a finer grit after, but this is the first go over. One fifty. You probably can't tell on camera, but I've got a few spots um, that looks like I've nicked with the um, with the scraper, scratched. And if I remember when I got the piece, there were a few scratches in it. No big deal. I'll just sand this, and then I'm going to put the wood filler in. When you're sanding, I've said this before, make sure you go with the grain of the wood. I know sometimes it's not always possible. For example, if you are sanding down a door front and you have like a small piece, um, just do the best you can, but for the most part on a, on a top surface like this, try and um, go with the grain of the wood, the direction of the wood. Wood filler. So I just have to let that dry and then I will come back to sand again on the, just give it a light go over. And then we'll be ready for the next step, which I think is going to be priming today. So I've taken off all the paint. I've sanded it down. I've put some wood filler in the holes where the doors were. And I actually haven't done anything to the inside yet. Um, I'm just waiting for the wood filler to dry and then I'll go in and I'll sand it.
but I have sanded this and I've wiped it back with a um, wet microfiber cloth. So my next, and it's all even, it looks really good. Um, there are some spots where there is a little bit of the chalk paint left over. I'm not too worried about that because I have the, the primer and there is no wax on it at all. So it's not that big of a deal if there are some spots of paint. So my next step is to prime. Update. There are a lot of stains coming through in this and I don't know if it's because I wiped it back with water. Not a big deal, just means I'm going to have to change my color concept. I took the back off because I was going to paint it and it's just particle board. So what I'm going to do is a decoupage method, an iron-on decoupage method. I'm not a decoupage person, but today I'm going to do it on the back of the furniture. And there is this really cool method and it's called the iron-on technique. And basically what you do is you take some form of glue. It can be Mod Podge. It can be Fusion Ultra Grip. It can be just regular white glue thinned a little bit with water. And what you do is you paint the entire surface. Usually one coat is needed and you don't have to do it really thickly. Just make sure that it's covered and you let it dry completely. And then what you do is you take your paper and this is what I'm thinking of doing. I have this great wrapping paper and I'm thinking of lying it cut to fit and putting it on on this so then when it's installed in the back you can just see it slightly but what this means is that i'm probably going to change the color concept color concept that i had in my mind and i might do um a medium beige on the inside and on the shelf and then on the outside i will probably do ash and the there are the reason I'm considering ash is because there are a lot of stains coming through. It's just complete bleed through. So essentially what you do, oops, you paint on with your glue medium. Um, today I'm using Ultra Grip. And just make sure that you cover it everywhere. Doesn't have to be a super thin coat. Can be, does, but kind of a medium coat not super thick, not super thin, just enough. And um, let it dry completely. And then the fun begins. I've just spilled this on my shoe. So I might be doing a tutorial how to paint your shoes. Anyway, so this is the color that I'm using. Ash by Fusion. It's an acrylic paint. Um, if you follow along with my channel, you have seen me talk about this before. Made in Canada, super quality. Just love this paint. Goes on super smooth. No need for a top coat. Great for modern finishes. Anyway, so if you can see, which I'm sure you can, there are a lot of stains coming up through the primer. So I'm going to go with a darker color and what this will do will hide the stains. Um, this is this happens with older furniture, uh, poor quality stains. I've talked about this in a previous video. Um, typically furniture from the 30s and 40s will have uh, linseed oil in the furniture. This is probably from the 70s. So. It's not that old, it's just not the best quality. Um, types of wood, for example, mahogany, cherry, teak will often have uh, stains coming through because they have natural oils in their wood. So this clearly has stains, but I'm going with a dark pigmented paint and we won't see them. I love the paint because it just glides on, but just to go over the application again, so I dip my brush in the paint and then I offload wipe on the sides 
and um, two thin coats, not one big, not one thick coat. And I'm going to do all of the outside in ash, and the inside is put putty, I think, but we'll get to that soon. When you paint, get the paint on quite quickly. It shouldn't take you a half an hour to paint a, a tabletop. You really just need to get it on there, make sure it's um, quite smooth without any paint splotches or any kind of drips or anything like that. Let the paint dry, let it level on its own and come back to it after the recommended drying time and then do your second coat. Okay, so the beige interior, the pebble color, is pretty much dry. I've done another layer of the ash on the exterior just because when I flipped it over to install the, the legs, I scratched it because it's quite fresh. Um, so I've done another layer. What I'm going to do now with the metallic color Old Gold, this is also by Fusion, I'm going to paint the frame and I have one last step after that and then it should be ready but for now I'll just you can see this color it's probably going to take me a few coats what I'm going to do for a little bit of added product protection is to add a layer of stain and finishing oil and this is a new product from fusion and you can use it on raw wood painted wood and basically it's an oil-based product so once it's dried it dries super hard you can use it on floors you can use it on other wooden surfaces like kitchens bathroom cabinets things like that it's once it's cured it's extremely durable so you don't shake it you kind of mix it back and forth um, to get the pigments kind of uh, dispersed throughout the the the, the product and then with the sponge applicator pad, you apply it and then wipe back. So that's my next step and hopefully the last. Got the stain and finishing oil on. I like to do this um, step by step, one side at a time. I've got it on and then the next step is to take a, take a cloth and wipe it back, wipe the excess back. Okay, so I'm going to show you the decoupage iron-on method. And if you are a decoupager, which I am not, um, you probably have your own tricks. But I don't really decoupage very much and I've found that I can never get it flat, it always looks a mess, it always has bumps in it, and it just, I just can't get it looking good. So I came across this tutorial on YouTube. I can't remember who did it. I painted this with Fusion's Ultra Grip and I've let it dry. Next step that I need to do is to measure my, and this is the wrapping paper that I've decided to use. Um, I've measured, roughly measured my wrapping paper to fit the back. And then what I'm going to do is with the um, not a super hot iron, but kind of like a, a medium heat iron. No steam, no water whatsoever. That's really important because if you have steam, you'll wrinkle your paper. And what you're supposed to do, and what I'll tell you what I've forgotten, um, you are supposed to have a piece of parchment paper or baking paper 
on your paper that you want to stick and then you iron on the parchment paper. But I forgot my piece of parchment paper at home. What I'm going to try is just an old scrap piece of linen and we'll see how it goes. But typically the reason that you do use parchment paper is some of the papers, like for example, rice paper, the, um, the glue will seep through and the parchment paper doesn't stick to the glue that seeps through the, the rice paper or whatever that, or fabric or whatever you're trying to stick. So this is pretty solid paper. I don't think that the glue will seep through, but we'll give it a test run to see how it goes. So just make sure it's straight. I'm going to start off at the corner. And I'm just going to iron and press quite hard. And what happens is the heat um, reactivates the glue and then the paper sticks to the reactivated glue. It's sticking flat and then also you have your iron. So let's see. Yay! It worked. So I am just going to keep going, ironing a piece of paper on the back of my furniture. So I finished ironing. You can see that. See how flat that is? And the next step is to take off the, the excess. So the easiest thing that I found to do is just take a, a piece of sandpaper and just lightly, lightly sand the edges and um, you'll get an even line. And you don't have to, you don't have to rip the whole thing off all at once. Do it quite gently. And you have a, a very straight line. So here's the finished board. If you can see that, see how flat that is? And it stuck really well. Some of the edges are a little bit, um, I guess I didn't get enough glue on the edges, but that's okay because uh, it's going into the furniture back and right around the edges, I'll have to staple it or, or nail it to the back anyway. So it, it won't be a problem with the paper peeling up. If you have an idea to do this on the front or top of a piece of furniture, I really recommend putting on a top coat after, which can either be lacquer or uh, finishing oil. Um, these are fusion products that I'm talking about. If you do decide to put a lacquer on it, what will happen is the paper will wrinkle. Don't worry about it because once the lacquer dries on top of the paper, you can go back with your parchment paper and you can iron it again and it will smooth out all of, all of the bumps from the lacquer application. <sighs> okay, so it's time to put the back on. So basically there is a, a frame that this sits inside and all I'm going to do is staple gun it in there. That's how it was when I, um, when I took it off. So just make sure it's the right way up. Make sure it fits properly. And then we're almost done. You can see that. Um, I'm just going to put the shelf in. I'm pretty much finished. Um, you can see that there's two little, looks like they're holes. They're not holes. It's just the light poking through from the, the paper that's on the back because there were cutouts in that, that backboard 
from, I'm assuming the previous owner who would have put holes in it for cords or something like that. This is quite common, I see this a lot. Just to refresh, this is the door that was on it and I absolutely despised it. So I'm thrilled with this. I think it suits the style. I love the new legs. It's modern and kind of retro modern and that's where it should be because it's, it's, it was trying to be something that it wasn't. Just by adding details on a flat door doesn't change the style of furniture. It makes it look kind of funny. Next up is to stage it, so stay tuned.